Well, my name is Molnir Bhattar, I'm the CEO of Patient Prism, and I'm, we're, we're talking to, with Teresa Duncan here on all things insurance. And, and Teresa's been around uh, the dental industry for, for over two decades, consulting, helping, training, um, speaking, mm -hmm. uh, and, and really, um, uh, so we, we're, we're doing an amazing amount of segments with her on, 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 on different issues related to insurance. But one of my questions to you right off the bat is, is, is out of network, right? Um, there's lots of dentists right now, they decide to keep a certain amount of insurance plans, yeah. and they decide to not register with everybody, right? The big ones, they said, oh, we'll take these three, but the other ones are not there. So what, what are your thoughts about our, our being out of network um, and, and communicating that with the patient correctly? Well, I think being in network is very helpful for a lot of offices to get their marketing up and to get their patient flow going, but sure. then you reach a point where maybe you're booked out too far. Okay. Or maybe uh, the, the reimbursement just isn't working for you. Okay. Uh, maybe it's more of one of the more confusing plans for your team to deal with. So you think, you know what, maybe I could trim one or two. And the biggest question I get is, well, what about these patients? They're not going to come back. So the good news is they do come back. They come back, but it takes, I like to say, it takes about one and a half hygiene cycles for them to come back because they'll leave you then they'll, they'll miss you if, right. if you're an excellent office, right? Sure. They'll miss you, they'll wonder why they left, they'll go back one more time to whatever new office they pick and then they'll say, forget it, I need to go back home. So what we do see is that they do come back. And just being at a network doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have any benefits. And that's the role of the insurance coordinator is to make sure, sure. we know how their benefits work in our office. Sure. So I, I don't think it's a kiss of death. I hear a lot of offices say, oh, if I get off all the insurances, I'm, you know, my office is gonna shut down. And, it may not, it's not gonna shut down, it's just gonna operate differently. Will you downsize a little bit with teams? Maybe, and that's not a bad thing. If, sure. you, if you're paying somebody to you know, just manage the insurance, right? If you don't have as much to manage, maybe you could take it down a little bit. My thing is you're gonna have more people that are going to be able to get into your practice. The offices who are really insurance dependent and have tons of plans, they're booked out so far and you just can't do that with today's insurance sure. patient. Sure. So I, I don't think it's a kiss of death, I just think you have to operate differently, and it kind of feels like you're going back to basics, really. It's all about the communications, it's all about the relationship. Um, one thing I want, we want offices to think about is, if you feel that it's time to get off of a plan, it probably is. Because you don't okay. think about that until you start to go, well, this isn't working for me. So you have to listen to your gut on that. So if you keep thinking about it and keep thinking about it, Start looking at your numbers. Start looking sure. at your schedule. Maybe it's time. And when you decide what plans to be in that work with, um, what factors do you consider? Um, so first of all, I would take a look at what your patient mix is. So if you have a lot of, say, Acme insurance patients, uh, and you, you're thinking you want to go in network with Acme, well, you may already have so many Acme patients that once you take that right off, now you've effectively given a discount to all these patients you already had. So you have Great to know point. what your patient mix is. I sure. mean, it makes no sense to go in network with a plan that has a lot of your existing patients. Now, say a new employer, a new large employer moved into the area. <coughs> if a new employer moves into the area, you may want a piece of that. So take a look at their plan, see if there's a good fee schedule, then maybe you join in and, and see if it works for you. But just because everybody around you is on that plan, that's not enough for me. Is it a good idea to hire a consultant to help you navigate this process? Sure, there's plenty of, of consultants out there that will take a look at your participation levels and see whether or not it works for you. Um, I think, honestly, if you have a good insurance coordinator that's been doing this a lot, he or she can become really familiar with what's going on out there with the plans. So say you want to join Acme Insurance's network because big employer moved in. Well, if all of the interactions she's had with Acme Insurance had been negative and you have to fight really hard to get your claims paid, sure. maybe you don't want to be in network with Acme. And so it, it is a process that I mean, and but but the other thing that you had talked about was, you know, the communication when it when somebody says um, that somebody you know that they're out of network. Mm -hmm. What do you tell them, right? What do you tell them that oh we don't take that insurance? It's something well, that you don't. So say. we don't. Yeah, we don't say that. That's okay. absolutely what we don't say. So we say um, we're just we're not on your your plans list. And what that means is that you can still come to us. It's just that we're not on your plans list. Now, the caveat on that is to make sure that they can come to you with benefits because some plans don't pay for anything if you're not as part of their network. But that's not as often, but we need to be, be aware of that. So you could say, we're just not on your insurance company's list. That doesn't mean that you can't come here. So right. why don't you give me your information and let me check into that for you and then I'll know for sure whether what, what it's gonna look like for you to be a patient here. Do you need to be extra careful when you're 
uh, collecting, for example, when you have no idea what the outer network insurance is going to pay you. Mm -hmm. uh, so what do you collect from the patient? And then uh, the out of network patient pays you three hundred dollars for that crown, yeah. and then you collected hundred dollars. And then so so how do you what how do you recommend insurance coordinators handle that? So I'm a big fan of pretreatment estimates. Uh, and so finding out, and if anything, just to find out what the fee schedules are or what the UCR is on that sure. particular um, procedure. But I also use the terms, this is my best estimate. I never say it's going to be covered at this sure. or it's, you know, this is my best estimate. What we found, I use a lot of that. What we have found with plans like yours is that it looks like it's going to cover it at 50%, but it ends up being more like 40%. Yeah. So I'm going to change this estimate so it better reflects that. If there's anything left over, I'm going to send you a refund. Don't worry about that. I'll make sure it's right at the end. That's important because you don't want to write off, I mean, keep writing off because the patient's not going to pay it afterwards. No. After the procedure is done. No. The psychology is, it's done. You told me this. I paid you what you asked me yes. for. Um, and in fact, when I used to teach uh, accounts receivable and billing, I would say, pretend you're never going to see that patient again. Right. How do you handle it at that moment? Because in my mind, that patient has turned into vapor when they walk out, sure. as far as money goes. Sure. So if you go, if you approach every financial conversation thinking the patient's gone, that changes things a little bit. And it's, but, but from a compliance standpoint, if you're out of network, it's, mm -hmm. it's, 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 I guess, less burdensome in terms of collecting a little more and then refunding them back, right? Yes, absolutely. And, and it's fine to do that. And you don't have so many restrictions on what you can charge. Right. And, and so it's, it's a win-win when you finally uh, wrap your mind around doing it. Because it's, um, it's a big, scary thing to go out of network for a lot of dentists. Great topic. I mean, I think uh, a lot of our listeners are going to enjoy listening about this because you need to understand how to deal with uh, out-of-network patients yeah. and the communication you need to have with them, how to build for them effectively, and, and, and collecting the right amount so that you don't have to you know, lose a lot of money when, when the insurance company doesn't pay you as much. So thank you so much for this conversation. You're welcome. We'll thank keep you. keep the discussion going. Thanks.